Welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is context. And uh, what we're going to talk about is how context shapes our experience and how we can utilize context as a tool to um, redirect, redefine, expand, grow, all kinds of things like that. We often use context to limit ourselves, but we're going to look at the other side of this whole picture here. So before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together vigorously rub those hands together feel all that friction the temperature the pressure all those sensations the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life welcome 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 good morning it's so good to be here with you this morning so um, we're talking about context, and um, I've been taking a course called the Regenerative Practitioner Series from an organization called Regenesis, and um, it's very, very, very much about re-educating context. And what I mean by that is when we look at a project and we want to create Good morning, Rosalind. Welcome. So good to have you here with us this morning. Um, we are talking about context. So I'm taking this course and in order for it, it's from uh, good morning, Jenny. Wonderful to have you here with us this morning, sweetheart. So um, let's talk about context and and I'm just going to give an example um, this regenerative practitioner series is is um, or training is about creating regenerative projects. And it's been a total re-education for me because when, hey, good morning, good morning, Gia, welcome. It's great to have you here. We're talking about context. So I'm talking about this course that I'm taking from an organization called Regenesis. It's uh, the Regenerative Practitioner Series. Um, and um, it is very much about context. So Jenny, you ask a really good question. Is it is that perception? Is context defined by perception? And I'm going to switch that around. Is perception defined by context? So I'm going to address that. And hopefully I'll be able to give you an example of how different um, how different context can shape something. So uh, we were I have a small cohort in this course that we're working on um, creating a regenerative approach to a project that a friend of mine has where they have a wonderful, beautiful retreat center in Tamaqua, Pennsylvania. And um, it's called Stonehenge. If you want to check it out, you could go to Stonehenge Gardens, I think, dot com. It might be dot org. But anyway, um, and it's very much oriented toward permaculture and a, a retreat center and a um, art healing arts center and an art center, et cetera. Anyway, it is in the context. It, it 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 was its own or is its own thing. And so when 
the idea of regeneration is that we look at three levels of context. And interestingly, which was a mind bending experience for me, uh, we were instructed to be looking at what's called the proximate whole, meaning the surrounding environment, rather than looking first at the project, look at the surrounding environment and what it's being called to be or produce or whatever. So um, in the in the context that it currently exists, this project is kind of a little bubble, a little mecca in the midst of coal country, you know, an area that um, saw its heyday when coal was a big thing. And um, now, now it's a really depressed area and its landscape is very deeply scarred by the coal industry's machinations. And anyway, so I'm, I'm, Jenny says, could you please define what context means? So I'm trying, I'm going to try and do that with an example, Jenny, and then we can go more deeply into it. But I really appreciate your asking. So um, context is is sort of the container through which we interpret things. And that's a really loose conversation or a loose definition. But here, hopefully this example will help. So um, the, the original context for this project was to, um, to perpetuate the vision of this spiritual arts, nature-based healing center, art center, that had been started 50 years ago and to create programming and and um, and events and such that brought people from very different kinds of backgrounds together, right? So um, in this regenerative thing, we were encouraged to be looking at the the container, the proximate whole. In other words, we were shifting context from this project that was its own entity that happened to be in this place to looking at the place as the context within which this project existed. And to look at that place in the context of an even bigger whole, a bigger context, to say, well, what what is this place, the town Tamaqua, and what is its relationship to a an even more expansive and even bigger context? So the question is, like, how do we define that context? What is it going to be? And um, so in looking at it, I was looking at, well, what is Tamaqua? And Tamaqua has a, a rich history of being a hub of um, industry because it was the center of this coal country, anthracite coal country in Pennsylvania. And um, as a result of that, it, it was a place where there were a number of firsts uh, like the first railroad uh, steam engine, I think, it, uh, in, I don't know if it was in the entire country, but in Pennsylvania, I think, and the first uh, fishery, um, you know, a, 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 I'm sorry, a hatchery for fish, the first place in the country, in the world, actually, to legislate um, rights of nature, you know, so there's a lot of firsts, and we were looking at what is Tamaqua to sort of create a context, a container through which to view this project. Well, and and then looking at Tamaqua in, in the larger region, and and I'm playing with the notion of the larger region, the context being coal country, and so if we look at Tamaqua as part of coal country, and we look at this regenerative project, this project that's trying to um, to really create change in in um, our relationship to the planet and our relationship to each other and nature and and rehabilitating 
um, nature, et cetera, what emerged is the potential for Tamaqua to be sort of a center of rehabilitation and vision for, for um, restoring coal country, restoring the damage that was done through all this coal industry to the natural landscape, to environment, um, so Jenny says, down the rabbit hole to understand why, wider complex perception. Yes, yeah, this is, so context is, is defining the boundaries of our understanding. So by shifting the notion of this project, the context from this self-contained thing to being in relationship with its surroundings and being an a reciprocal um, uh, contribu contributor to its surroundings and enabling its surroundings to be part of what it is, the context expanded radically and the potential for the vision of the project also of a sudden gained a greater importance, a greater meaning, a greater possibility. Exactly, Jenny says, opening limiting beliefs. Exactly. So um, what, what has happened in my mind around this is that the potential for the project, rather than being this sort of isolated little bubble that was beautiful, and had all kinds of wonderful intentions to expand it into maybe being a catalyst or a or a hub place for rehabilitating coal country. You know, it's like the context just sort of exploded into something much more grand, much more possible that would be aligning a, a much greater um community of people and galvanizing a hope and a vision that is so much bigger than the original thought. So Rosslyn says, akin to a company putting their motto or mission statement on their homepage website. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where you're making that connection. However, what I can say about the motto or mission statement is that it's a whole different thing to say that our company is going to be equitable and and fair and uh, be committed to social justice. That's a whole different context because it's confined to the company to saying our company has a mission of transforming business to be a place of equitable inclusion and allowing themselves as that business to be outreaching and modeling and interacting and collaborating with other businesses to create this bigger vision, this bigger context, a more integrated context in the world rather than being confined to their own, um, their own, Identity. So Rosslyn says context being a conceptual model. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So context is a conceptual model. That's a great place to start. And so now we'll circle back around, Jenny, to be looking at how we can uh, use this idea of context to shape our own experience and to potentially broaden our own horizons. So um, when we can take it into something as simple as, let's say, giving, feeding our child before going to school, you know, putting breakfast on the table, um, we, when we're in the, and when we're engaged in the action of putting breakfast on the table, that we're engaged in the doingness of it, right? We're, we're concerned about getting all the food ready, setting the place, making sure the kid is sitting there and eating, you know, putting the food on the table. 
actually is one context, then when we say, when we recognize a greater context of why are we putting food on the table, we're wanting to create nourishment and support and nurturance for the people that we are providing that food to, then that creates a different context because if it were just putting food on the table, we might be rushing, 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 getting the food on the table, throwing, slopping the food down, and you know, then we're done versus creating nourishment and nurturance. There's going to be a whole different attitude about preparing that food, <clears throat> about serving that food, about presencing ourselves to the person that is there to consume that food, it will change our shift our way of being in the context of relationship, right? So we have a, a different level, a higher level of relatedness and relationship when we recognize that the context is nourishment and vitality and creating life then we realize it's not just about getting the food on the table, but <clears throat> that there's a quality of being that we bring to the circumstance that is different, that is of a higher order than if we were just getting the food on the table. Does that make sense? So we're creating a context is also a container for meaning. And, and for our behavior. So if we, and we've talked about this a bunch, uh, that one of the, the foundational hypotheses that I operate from, which has really been life-saving and life-altering for me, is life is happening for me and through me rather than to me. And so that that hypothesis or that operating statement creates a very different context from I live in a hostile universe, right? Or, or um, well, let's just stick with that. You know, if I live in a hostile universe, that is a context through which I'm going to interpret everything. You know, somebody looks at me sideways, I'm going to presume that they're out to get me, right? Um, if, if I am living from a place of life is happening for me and through me, maybe I might see somebody looking at me sideways as an opportunity to, to smile at them and elevate them. It's a very different context that's going to shape my experience and shape my beingness and thereby shape my actions, shape my behaviors, shape my interactions. So Jenny says, ah, I think in outer space, I think that in outer space is constantly expanding, discovering other livable earth planets outside the solar system and opening possibility uh, that uh, other life forms exist. Well, you could, you know what? I love it. We'll use that as an analogy. So when we recognize that it's an expansive universe, if we dif if we look at the an expansive, unbounded universe, then it makes total sense that other life forms exist. You know, because it's if it's unbounded, then that leaves the place for all kind all possibilities, right? So of course other life forms would exist. It's just a given. It's just a given in that context, right? And we may not have discovered them or we may not have been able to recognize them. You know, then we get to look at well, what's the definition of life? right? What's the context within which we're looking for life? So really, everything is defined by context. And we have the capacity to redefine our contexts 
And in that redefinition to create a greater expansiveness of being of our, our essential expression, right? Like if I, if my context for how life is, is that I am ineffectual and powerless, then I'm not going to try to impact my environment. I'm not going to take action in the face of change that I want to see happen, right? If I believe that everybody makes a difference and that my voice matters, I'm going to be more likely to speak up or to find places where I can take action. You know, if I believe that um, that I get to be the change I want to see, you know, if I believe that being the change I want to see makes a difference, that's a context then I'm going to step up and act very differently from if I believe that there's nothing I can do about anything anyway. You get it? So context. Um, in our families, let's say we might have a um, dysfunctional family. We could see ourselves as a victim of it. Or the context could be, I'm a vehicle for healing this family, you know? Um, and so also on the, on the dark side of that notion is uh, healer people tend to martyr themselves in certain ways because they believe that they're the one that can heal things. You know, I, I, encounter lots of folks who believe you know like saving the world is my responsibility and and i believe that saving the world is my responsibility but it's not my responsibility alone and so you know when we recognize that that there is a if we create a context of a union of many disparate spirits that have an intention toward um, creating a better life, then we can participate in that without bearing the entire burden, right? So um, Jenny says, I agree, treat yourself like you matter and people will treat you the way you treat yourself. Exactly, we, tr we teach people how to interact with us. We create a context in which people relate with us, right? And um, our interpretations can flow from that context and we can create that context. So Roslyn says, what were the three ways to look at context? Oh, I didn't know that there were three ways to look at context, but I love it. Um, emergent property. So there's like they there's an a context that we can sense as we sense into something, relationship or conditions that have effect, etc. So uh, context is something that we can shape that shapes us and that is also evolving, right? Context is not something that need be static. You know, it, it can be alive and changing as situations and circumstances and perceptions and intentions change. So, um, For instance, if we have a job as a teacher, being the teacher in the context of a classroom is very different 
from how we might be in the context of a grocery store. You know, like, again, are we still a teacher in a grocery store? So the context kind of in, um, influences our beingness. Maybe when, if we're a stand-up comic, we're not a stand-up comic all the time. We're a stand-up comic when we're up on stage and the beingness of the stand-up comic aspect of ourselves is context defined. It, it's not gonna be the same beingness that we have if we're at a funeral. Right. So Jenny says healers have to believe in themselves so then others will have faith and believe in the healer. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's I think that that's true. And I also think it's really important to be looking at what that belief in ourselves in whatever context means you know um depending on how if we're moving from ego or we're moving from service there's a very di big difference in that and it's worthy of a longer conversation for sure jenny but i i agree that if i if I presence myself with the confidence and the and the clarity and the certainty as a healer, then then that in itself has power, uh, has healing power, for sure, for sure, and um, and it spurs confidence in the person who I'm working with, for sure. So beautiful point. And Rosalind says the example was. The regenerative farm how the model became how the model came to be that model would be to restore the coal town it's interesting right because this was an agricultural area and it's not it's not just regenerative farming but a regenerative project so a regenerative project goes into not just being isolated because there's not that's not regenerative, but being connected to bigger holes. And those there's a reciprocity between these different levels of existing that feed each other and then become like a life affirming cycle that um, supports itself. So, so Jenny says, I agree with you on service versus ego around the healer and the confidence that a healer brings to service for sure. And Gia says, context affects our identities. It changes with what I am identified with in the moment, isn't it? Yes. So here's the thing, context affects our identities and our identities affect context. It's a reciprocity. We get to, it, it's an evolutionary kind of thing. And the power in identifying and defining context is that we have the ability then to create another level, a higher order of being in ourselves as we create a greater context for our existence. So when we have a sense of purpose and a sense of mission and a clarity about that, then that changes our beingness and jenny says i'm curious what is your service so um I, that's a big question and i actually have to go and i appreciate that question and i think that we can provide service on all different levels so um one level of service that i do is is my core connection work and um it is about transforming consciousness and so my whole thing is that the shift of the planet is going to occur as we transform consciousness. So as a professional, I, should, I use my core connection process with clients to support them in transformation, releasing their limiting beliefs and behaviors to be able to be fully expressing the essence that they are. And I believe that through the fullest expression of our essential selves, that is the greatest service and the greatest transformative power on the planet. 
because when we're empowered, we then can be here and make the difference that we came here to make. And um, so that's that's what I do here with you guys is we're talking about consciousness. We're elevating consciousness and awareness and 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 transcending the limitations that we have and empowering ourselves to be able to be more deeply engaged with life and with its evolution. So thank you for asking that question, Jenny. And thank you guys so much for participation. This was such a wonderful conversation. It's like the time just evaporated for me. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Jenny, thank you. Jenny says you're doing a great service for this group. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want you to know that you are serving me as well. Like this is this is enriching me on all levels as well. And I'm deeply grateful for it. And with that, I'm going to wrap it for this morning. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I invite you to uh, check out the other awesome programming from Enlightened World Network, Enlightened World Living, EWN, One with the Earth. Gia says, thank you, Mira Rubin. I love this time, as do I, Gia. Thank you so much for being part of it. And until next time, guys, so much love to you. And I hope to see you again here really, really soon.